Hello, welcome. This is Sean Roberts. I am the Chief Technologist for uh, Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts, and I have with me Mark Collier, uh, Chief Operating Officer for OpenStack Foundation. Um, full disclosure, Mark and I have known each other for, wow, maybe a decade now. It's uh, we have. close to that. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to bring Mark on and uh, talk a bit about the history of OpenStack and mm -hmm. how uh, telecom and mobile infrastructure has evolved with the OpenStack being an open uh, source infrastructure that is, uh, mm -hmm. well, arguably has changed the, the world of, uh, of data centers and um, enterprises across the world. So welcome, Mark. Thank Give you. A pick. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, we have been working together for a long time. And, you know, for those who aren't familiar with open source, you know, it's, it's really the predominant method for developing software now. It's been 10 years since we launched OpenStack, so a lot's changed. But back in those days, it wasn't quite as common. You know, today, 92%, I think, of all software incorporates some open source. So in terms of how software gets written, open source is definitely the way innovation's happening now. But if you rewind the clock back to when we started OpenStack, I was at Rackspace, which at the time was one of the biggest cloud computing providers, along with Amazon Web Services. And, uh, and we worked with NASA, who was looking to build some automated infrastructure software, cloud computing software, and wanted to do it in the open. And so open source is really the best method for developing software. In my opinion, the reason why it's gotten so much traction since then is because the, the smartest engineers are never in one country or one company. So open source, you work across organizations across the world. And we've had over 8,000 developers and 100 plus countries develop, uh, contribute to OpenStack over the last decade. So when we started it, it was really meant to take compute storage and networking in a data center, automate that for what's you know, now known as cloud computing. And NASA had tons of data and they wanted to, to be able to store that and process it and move it around with, with a, a collaborative piece of software developed with other companies and other, other organizations, other governments, agencies. So we came together and announced that in 2010. And then about two years later, we created the OpenStack Foundation. So I left Rackspace to go uh, become the COO of the OpenStack Foundation, which is a, a nonprofit really designed to have a neutral home and kind of help coordinate all this development. When you have 8,000 developers in 100 plus countries, you know, you need to have uh, somebody to kind of herd it all together and, and help put on events, uh, do all kinds of you know, online community building, just, just create a, a sense of a culture and welcoming environment. So people who maybe are at competitors, but they actually work together on one common goal, which is this piece of software called OpenStack. And then uh, at that time, when we started it, we had no idea it would ever be used for mobile networks, none. And that was completely uh, unfathomable to us. Um, we were thinking about servers in a data center for web applications, just typical things people want to put in a web hosting environment, WordPress, whatever you want to host your website on. Uh, but the, it turns out that processing, storing, moving data uh, in an automated way is exactly the kind of use case that networks have. And so over the past several years, we've seen a huge adoption within almost every single mobile network in the world is now running OpenStack. I think nine out of the top 10 are now running OpenStack, which represents like 3 billion subscribers right now connected to mobile networks through things powered by OpenStack. So it's kind of a crazy uh, journey we've been on, but it's, it's helped, I think, accelerate uh, the adoption of 4G and now 5G, and we can get into some of those details, but I mean, that's kind of the, the Reader's Digest summary. Awesome. Well, um, just to dive a little bit deeper into how um, how they use OpenStack. Are they using it in their data centers? Are they using it at the edge? Um, are they using it other places? Um, yeah, that's, that's a great a great question. So um, it started off in the data center and, and over time, which is what OpenStack was originally designed to do, run in a huge, you know, kind of hyperscale data center, um, centralized all your compute storage and networking. But as mobile networks have gotten faster and the latency requirements have gotten you know, more demanding and sort of the capabilities are there to have lower latency to support higher data speeds, you know, as you went to 4G and now 5G, the need for that compute, not just the networking layer, but more of the, the heavy lifting to push out to the edge has moved, meant OpenStack has moved towards the edge. So you have AT&T, for example, I think they have like 200 
uh, OpenSAT clouds basically kind of inside the network. And um, so, you know, in kind of the regional um, topology, if you will, of, of how they, they roll out their networks and they want to run that into over thousands, you know, thousands of clouds essentially, mm -hmm. which it kind of breaks the notion of cloud down into sort of a mind bending way because it's kind of turns it upside down. But it turns out that you actually want a lot of that compute closer to the subscriber, closer to the user because they just get better performance and mm -hmm. physics means that you don't want to be moving things. Uh, you know, the speed of light is nobody has gone, gone past it yet. So uh, we'll wait for the quantum uh, breakthroughs to come through. But for right now, it, it makes sense to push it to the edge. So OpenStack is moving to the edge. Um, and I'll just mention one other very recent example. So Verizon Wireless um, announced that they're using um, a new open source uh, community led project that we at our foundation help to shepherd and grow, which is called Starling X. And it actually takes OpenStack and Kubernetes, another uh, very popular open source piece of software out there that's built by a community of people around the world, puts those together and they're using that for their RAN, so their 5G um, radio access network. Those things are moving into software, which were previously built in sort of fixed function proprietary hardware. And these network carriers are, are adopting open source to kind of drive down costs, move faster, be able to push updates out and not have to rip and replace gear. So I'm kind of kind of jumping around here at, at this this 10 year trend, but the trend is really more software and more of the software that you're using is open source. And that brings you back to OpenStack. And, and yes, to answer your question, it is moving to the edge. It's obviously not going all the way to a handset. That's not, not that kind of edge, but um, depending on how you define edge, if you need to have uh, serious data capabilities to crunch and store and, and compute and move that data around, which you do certainly with 4G and now 5G, then that's where you, some things like OpenStack get, get closer to the end user. And, uh, and maybe another way of uh, more clearly defining the edge, that doesn't typically mean the mobile towers themselves. Um, that typically means um, uh, where the towers connect into the, the carrier networks. Not to say that mobile towers, uh, there aren't many mobile towers running OpenStack as well now. So, one of the things you may may not know is that we actually just announced um, that starting next year in 2021, we're going to be um, become the Open Infrastructure Foundation. So we're still working very much on OpenStack, but now that we're supporting other projects like Starling X and, and Airship and Zool um, and Kata Containers, which is a secure container project. We're really looking at this next decade of open source infrastructure and taking on that bigger mission. And a lot of that does come back to the work we do with the mobile carriers. And that means uh, architectures are changing as the bottlenecks shift around. And so right. we're looking at kind of a, another decade now that we've had, had 10 years in since the OpenStack launch, you know, what's, what's the next frontier? And a lot of it is in kind of next generation networks and maybe things that go all the way to the tower. Awesome. Well, that's a great way to um, to close out this part of the discussion. Um, this has been Lincoln Shorts.